Welcome to my 10 HP Hardcore Iron Man. In the last video, I killed 8 Chaos Elementals so I could get the P++ Poison, and then successfully got my revenge on Shadow of the Storm. Oh my god, we did it. One quest point, 10,000 ranged XP, Dark Light unlocked. But now it's time to finish questing on the account, and to do that I'm gonna have to risk my 10 HP Hardcore status again. So what if I told you that a certain random event could really help my account out? Would you believe me? Well, that random event is the Dr. Jekyll Random. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a Torstal on you and you get a Dr. Jekyll Random event, he will give you a stamina potion in exchange for that Torstal. But here's the problem. Torstals are locked behind 85 farming, and that's not really early game content, so we need to figure out another way of how to get Torstals. Well, that way turns out to be getting 58 Hunter and catching Nature Implings for a 1 in 100 chance of getting two noted Torstals. And you're probably saying, yeah, that's great, dude. You're going to get a couple Torstals, and then you're going to get a Dr. Jekyll Random, and then you're going to get a couple Stamina Potions, and you're going to quickly use them, and they're going to be gone in like 30 minutes. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we're going to save up the staminas, we're going to get to 10 stamina potions, and then I'll be able to make the revitalization pool in my player-owned house. What pisses me off is I've already got 5 or 6 Dr. Jekyll randoms and I've just dismissed them because I didn't have the Torstal. So I'm going to start off the episode by getting 100 kudos so I can go to Fossil Island, and then I'll be able to do birdhouse runs. Is this historian going to give me more kudos? Yep, he is. 83, 88, 93, okay. So we're actually just 7 kudos away from Fossil Island. So I'm going to be doing Shield of Arav so I can get another quick 5 kudos. Now on this quest, you want to join the Black Arm Gang so you don't have to kill anything. So for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I'm a high-risk hardcore Iron Man, so I don't use the help of main scouts or other accounts. But on this quest, unfortunately, I'm going to have to to get the other half of the certificate. Thank you. And thank you. That's uh, that's incredibly OP that you can be given both ends of the certificate. I've never done Shield of Rob that easy in my life. We're up to 98 kudos now, and we're just two kudos off of Fossil Island and doing Bone Voyage. Oh, and we actually get an antique lamp here. Let's go with Herbler. 1,000 Herbler XP, all the way to 25. So we're going to try the observatory for our 100 kudos. I haven't done this quest in a long, long time. And this is probably one of the first quests I should have done on the account. So bad planning on my end. But the whole goal is not to get Leo because that gives me hit points experience. And obviously, I also don't want to get Virgo as that gives me defense experience. Please don't be Virgo. Please don't be Leo. Preferably not be any experience. I would rather not get any attack or strength as well. And we get... Oh, we got Spooned. We got Sagittarius. This is Maple Longbow, Uncut Sapphire. <laughs> Two quest points, 2,250 crafting XP, and uh, the five kudos. This is going to get me up to over 100 kudos so we can start Point Voyage. And there's 43 crafting coming in as well. And I just continued to get very, very lucky on this account. Very spooned. If you're enjoying the episode, a subscription to the channel is appreciated. We're 300 subscribers away from 40,000. Now, let's go upstairs one more time. Talk to the historian minus, and we're gonna be 103 kudos. All right, we can now do Boyne Voyage. At 100 kudos, we can also talk to the information clerk which is going to give us some extra experience in prayer, mining, crafting, smithing, slayer, hunter. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, I don't want prayer quite yet, though, do I? It says I'm only going to get it in crafting and mining, so let's proceed with it. Okay, good. Up to 49 mining. Here it is. Boyne Voyage completed. Fossil Island unlocked. And now I can lose my hardcore status by trying to unlock the mush tree number three. 
Now I'm actually not going to do that, but what I am going to do is I'm going to be doing my first birdhouse run. The issue I have right now is I'm only 8 magic and it takes forever to get here. I don't have 45 magic to enchant a ruby necklace into a dig site pennant. So what I'll be doing is I'll be looking at my quest list to see what other quests that I need to do before I raise my magic level. Oh, you need a clockwork. Shit. While I decided what I wanted to do next, I came to the Master Farmers to pickpocket some seeds, and we're about to get 62 thieving. There it is. We should have enough guams for at least one full inventory of Guthix's Resks. So, since we just unlocked Fossil Island, what I want to do is I want to go mine some soda ash so I can make Ultra Compost. And there we go, this should be 500 volcanic ash. So I think we're gonna stop here and we should have enough for a decent amount of ultra compost. Let's go ahead and plant the first guams on this account. And this is crazy, our first ultra compost coming in on the account at just 26 farming. That's insane. There's our first farming level coming in in a long time. 27, can I make apple trees? Look at that sweet corn. It's growing like Iowa corn. Very tall and looks like we got some good some good soil. That soil's very fertile. Hey, there's 28 farming coming in. Can now grow wild blood hops. So we're here at Copper Longtails, and what I'm gonna be doing is just getting some hunter levels while those seeds grow. So here's our last copper longtail. This is gonna get us to 12 hunter. What we're gonna try to do is the ascent of Arceus. This requires 12 hunter to do. I'll get 2,500 hunter experience from it, which will help with the early grind a little bit. So here we go, Ascent of Arceus. This one is going to be very, very difficult, and you're gonna see why in a second. Here we go, first one's gonna be easy. The next four are gonna be very challenging. We have to do this all in one go. First one down, you have to block the ghost before splashing. I see, I see, there we go. Just like that. Oh, we are close. Let's just stay, stay. There we go. Two down. Oh, here we go. Now go to the right. What? Why does, why? There we go, three down. And number four down. Just one left. All right, here, here it is, it's set up right now. Oh no, it's set up now. Perfect, what? Nine mad, oh my, now it's the end of the world. I'm, I'm literally pissed. Nine magic from this, are you kidding me? And that's all five completed. That actually was not too bad. It's funny, I've never done that on my liability, but I did that on South Mountain. So I'm pretty sure a trap soul is gonna spawn here. I don't think I can use cannon, but it should be 100% fully recoilable. There we go. Trap sold down. This should be a scent of Arceus completed. 1500 hunting experience coming in, 500 room crafting, a favor certificate, memoir page, and one quest point as well. That takes me from 12 to 16 hunter. And it go <laughs> takes me from one to five room crafting as well. We can now make water runes. So we used a favor certificate, which gave us another 10% on Arceus. We're now up to 55%. We're also going to use our Dark Disposition on our Crest Memoirs. That's going to give me a new Teleport to Zaya right here. And 29 farming coming in. You can now grow Goutweed if you've completed Edgar's Ruse. Goutweed, Gootweed, I don't know how to say it. Just like every other RuneScape pronunciation. Every Mac Age video has at least two mispronunciations. And that's probably being generous. Alright, let the hunting games really begin. So we're coming in on 23 Hunter, and then I'll be able to do Wild Kebets. And see you later. Copper Longtails and Ruby Harvest. I totally forgot, Kebet Claws. I can use this to three tick manipulate. The Wild Kebets were actually awful, and the Copper Longtails and Ruby Harvest just got uh, really slow. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna head back and see if I can make those Goth XTs. So we can go ahead and do the getting ahead quest, get to 25 construction so I can make the clockwork and then get back to Hunter, but on Fossil Island.
Here we go. The getting ahead quest. And once again, our 10 HP high risk hardcore Iron Man is on the line. Oh, that's awkward. I need 26 construction for this. Okay, it's not on the line quite yet. And it looks like we just got our last plank here. We have about 200 planks that I need to make into wood products since I am a construction noob. And then we'll finally get after this new quest and see if the RNG can be on my side. One more bookcase here. And we're going to be 26 construction. And we are ready to officially start. Gordon, let's start, my friend. Getting ahead. I'll give you a hand. And so it begins. So the next part is to do this boss. We're going to make our way to here. And we're going to try to recoil it. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to grab our 26 Gothic Tees and three rings of recoil. Let's make sure we're full charged. Uh, 37, that should be okay. And it's going to come down to RNG. That's the bottom line. Good luck to us. Hardcore status officially on the line again. So before we begin, a lot of you probably don't know this quest. This is called the Getting Ahead quest. It only came out about a month and a half ago on the 25th of November, 2020, obviously. And during this quest, you have to fight a level 82 headless beast, which hits tens, which is of course my hit points level. So in order to not die and preserve my hardcore Iron Man status, I'm gonna need Guthix's rests, which temporarily heal my hit points level above 10. That combined with recoiling, I hope to take down all 100 hit points, but it's gonna Gonna be very very close all right wish me luck so we're gonna gothic's rest up and we're gonna quickly run to the safe spot okay and we're gonna go back and forth and eventually you're gonna see a special attack which is a range attack which is just like that oh I like the side swipe better. Oh, holy fuck, that was chance. Stop talking. There's chance number one. Okay, focus. Oh! Did you see that? That regen. There's chance number two. That thing regen. Hit low. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> no! 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 Are you kidding me? Jagex! Oh! Oh no! Oh, I hate to do it boys, but we're not gonna risk it. So here we go, here are some clockwork mechanisms so we can finally do birdhouse runs on the account. So let's go ahead and build this chest. There we go. And now, whenever I need to bank, we could bank right here, that's perfect. And finally, the moment we've been waiting for, let's build our first birdhouses on the account. Oh my gosh, all that work just to build a measly willow birdhouse. Oh, one XP. Okay, one more now. There we go. 33 hunter, and we can leave. So barb-tailed kebits are going to be over here. So what I want to do is I want to go to Remington so we can get to Corsair Cove. And that way, we're avoiding a lot of the monsters over here in Feldip Hills if we were to go to somewhere like Castle Wars and run south. And this should be 37 Hunter. Can now trap Prickly Kebits. And we're one Prickly Kebit away here from 43 Hunter. And we can move on to the Falconry area. Is it gonna be this one? No. Is it gonna be this one? Yes, there we go. 43 Hunter coming in. And you can now catch Spotted Kebits. Oh, it's been a moment, man, since I've been at this place. 
Since liability, honestly. Oh, <laughs> the nostalgia of throwing a bird at a cabot. Ah, oh, I love it. I love it. We're very close. Just two more spotted cabots. One more. Here it is. 50. Yes. You can now catch eclectic implings. And we can start the Ranger Boots grind. So I know, a few of you are asking, well, how in the world are you going to get to Piro Piro without the quest Lost City? Well, let me explain to you, my friends. There are these things that are called crop circles within a wheat field. They're different on every single world. But if you hop enough worlds, you'll find a crop circle. Right now, I think the best crop circle for me is going to be just southwest of the GE. What I'm going to do is I'm going to world hop until I find a crop circle. And here you go. About five hops later, we've found a crop circle. So all you do is enter. How cool is that, my friends? And we're off. Now, the only downfall that I just thought of about this is I'm going to be getting some strength XP every time I push through the magical wheat. They're eventually going to change this to agility XP, but... So I think we just got everything to get a magic butterfly net. There we go. So with the help of a friend, figured out if we come here on the west side and you stand to the north, you get two chances at it. Two chances is better than one because a lot of the times I'm getting them on my second chance. And here it is, our first medium clue. Karamja. So here's what I've decided. I've decided to do every single quest down the line that I can do. So when I go back to doing medium clues, then I'll be able to get my magic level up. So the first quest is, like I said, right down the line, it's going to be Black Knight's Fortress. For every quest that it's available, I'm going to be using the quest helper. I said this in the last video, I'm taking complete advantage. What I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to be bringing my magic butterfly net everywhere I go. So when I see eclectic implings like this, if they don't run away from me, then I'll be able to just catch them and maybe, just maybe, get myself a medium clue scroll. All right, I got it. Yes, we got it. But here's another one. So that was about three minutes to complete this one. This is gonna be Black Knight's Fortress completed and the first of many quests complete. There's three quest points <laughs> for a two second quest that's Funny. This should be Dork's quest completed. These free to play quests are very, very short. One quest point, 1300 mining XP, and the ability to use these anvils. So, when I was hunting, I had to start the Corsair Curse, and it's next on the list. So, I decided that I was just going to finish it. You have to kill a level 35, and I'm at that point in the quest. He hits sixes, I believe, with magic. So, I should be able to fully recoil him, or I'm hoping that I could fully recoil him, but we're about to see. Oh, we're starting. Here's another example of why you don't want to have high magic, because stuff like this happens. You guys could be like, well, Mac H, why didn't you just get your magic to 25 when you do all these quests? Look at how hard of a time he has hitting me. And I'm like nine magic. Yeah, I'm nine. I'm nine magic. This actually heals pretty quick. So I'm just finishing up Pirate's Treasure right now. We just have to kill this gardener. But I only have a couple of free-to-play quests left. We have Witch's Potion, which we'll probably do next. And then I gotta figure out a way to do Corsair Curse. Dragon Slayer has defense XP, so I won't be doing that one. Imp Catcher, you get magic XP, so I don't want to quite do that one yet. The Restless Ghost, I'll be getting prayer XP when I do do it, but I'm not going to do that one yet either. And Vampire Slayer will give me attack XP, which I'm going to hold off on as well. Oh, okay. You can just run away from the Cardiner. I went back to go get my cannon. Two quest points and one-eyed Hector's treasure. So I misspoke. Witch's Potion gives 325 magic XP. Totally forgot about that. 
So really, the only free-to-play quest left I can do for now is Corsair Curse. So I'm going to try to do the Corsair Curse quest again. This time I've gone to Cockatrices to lower my magic level from level 9 to 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly attack a Cockatrice. Oh, it's already attacking me even better. Get ready for the poison. That should be good. Okay, two magic. That's good enough. Oh my god, it hits eight? Shut up. Wow, that gave me a little bit of a heart attack. I thought for some reason that those only would hit fours or sixes at the most. Never in my mind did eight cross me, but thankfully I ate up to full HP. I really can't do much better than this. Looks like we're going to be just a little bit short, unless a miracle happens. He, he's splashing at just nine magic. Nine magic and he's splashing. Uh, can you imagine that? Wow. Oh, so unlucky, man. Again, another quest where I'm so unlucky. And now we're going to run into another issue, is I'm 16 XP away from 10 magic. And I got to get more recoils. So, I could do this one of two ways. I could risk it at Fountain of Rune for free, or I could just enchant these. And honestly, I see BA going to Fountain of Rune right now and losing my account. So for this next attempt, what I've done is I've brought Iron Armor. That way, Ithoi's magic attack will hit me more frequently, and hopefully we'll be able to recoil it quicker. <laughs> what a sad game, man. Ah, oh, how pathetic, dude. Finally, we're going to do it. RNG is on our side this time. Yes. Five cakes left as well. We didn't even have to go into the potential plan of ticketing cabbages. Oh my gosh, dude. That was such a pain in the ass. And this should be Corsair Curse completed. Two quest points. Corsair Cove bank access and 73 total quest points now. 73, I'll risk it for you. <laughs> you little ginger prick. <laughs> In the next video, I'll once again put my 10 HP status on the line, only this time while we try to get Lovacane favor so we can continue questing on this account. If you guys enjoyed the episode, please leave a like. That really helps me out. Subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you either on Twitch or in the next episode. Take it easy. Peace.